Good day grade 11s, welcome to the second last lesson in your final exam prep week. Let's carry on with looking at paper 2 questions. It says hydrogen gas and oxygen gas react to form water according to the following balanced equation. So we've got two hydrogen molecules plus an oxygen molecule forms water and it gives off some kilojoules per mole. It says the activation energy for this reaction is 1370 kilojoules per mole. So then it says define the term activation energy. Again, you need to go learn these definitions, but basically the activation energy is the minimum energy required for this reaction to occur. So it says sketch potential energy versus reaction coordinate graph for the above reaction. Clearly label the axes and indicate the following, delta H, which is your enthalpy or the heat of the reaction. They want the activation energy for the forward reaction. They want you to label the reactants and products and the activator complex X. Okay, so first we need to decide if this is an endothermic or exothermic reaction. And we can see that energy is given off. It is given off. And because energy is given off, we can say it's an exothermic graph. So for that reason, we can immediately draw something that looks like that. Okay, now grade 11s, again, I have to say to you, please use a pencil and and a ruler and if you have to an eraser and make sure this is nice and neat it shouldn't look like mine it shouldn't be squiff on the page and it shouldn't have wobbly lines like this this can be slightly wobbly but that's about it okay then what you have to do is clearly label the axes well this is going to be your energy of the reaction in kilojoules per mole Okay, and this is going to be the course of the reaction, the course of the reaction, in other words, the reaction time. And these are your reactants and these are your products. So now we have done that. And what I would honestly, seriously stress for you to do is to tick off what they're asking you to label. So it says clearly label the axis done and indicate the following. Okay, we've done reactants products. Otherwise you might miss something. That's silly. Okay, now they want the activated complex. That's easy. That's X. It's over there so that we can tick. They want the enthalpy. Now the enthalpy is the heat of reaction which is the amount of energy given off. But it's also the difference between the energy that it started with and the energy it ended with. So that there is delta H. Okay, and that's all they want you to do is label it. Okay, and then the activation energy is the difference for the forward reaction is the energy required to get this reaction going. So that is your activation energy or your EA. Okay, so we've done that. Now it says write down the value of the heat of the reaction. Okay, so that's pretty easy. The heat of the reaction is 241,8 kilojoules per mole. So that was easy. Now it says, give the activation energy of the following reaction where we're going from water to hydrogen and oxygen. So do you agree that that is actually the activation energy of the reverse reaction? Because this is for water, hydrogen and oxygen forming water. So the activation energy of the reverse reaction is actually going to be from here to here. It's the difference between these two. So therefore we could say, well that's easy. That is 1370 minus 241,8. Because this is 241,8, the enthalpy. This was the original activation energy of 1370. So the activation energy of the reverse reaction is going to be 1370 minus 241,8. And we're going to get out our calculators. And it says 1370 minus 241,8. And that is equal to 1128,2. One thousand one hundred and twenty eight comma two joules kilojoules actually per mole right and please remember to include your units right let's do the next question it says limestone 
Also sometimes ash is used in pit latrines or long drops to neutralize the acidic waste. Limestone reacts with hydrochloric acid according to the following unbalanced reaction. So as soon as you're seeing limestone reacting with hydrochloric acid, we're thinking acid and base reactions. That's what we're thinking. Maybe it's not, but maybe it is, okay? It says that it's an unbalanced. Please note it's unbalanced, okay? So we'll have to work with that now. Now it says, define an acid in terms of the Arrhenius theory. Now guys, you need to know the difference between the Arrhenius theory Arrhenius theory and the Lowry Bronsted theory. The Arrhenius theory says is all to do with things dissolving water, okay? So Arrhenius says that an acid releases a hydrogen plus ion when dissolved in water. Okay, whereas Larry Bronsted said that acids are proton donors. So you guys need to know the difference between who's doing what here, okay? So we've done that. Now it says, is ash acidic or basic? Okay, now if this is your acid, okay, and you can see it's reacting like this, then obviously ash, ash is going to be basic because it's exactly the same as limestone. So it is basic it is acting as a base right above equation in your answer book and then balance the equation so we've got calcium carbonate and I'm not going to worry about solids and liquids and gases at the moment plus HCl becomes CaCl2 plus H2O plus CO2 okay so let's balance this so let's start off we've got one calcium here and one calcium We've got one carbon here and we've got one carbon here. We've got three oxygens here and we've got three oxygens here. So far everything's looking good. Uh oh. There. Yeah, we've got two hydrogens and two chlorines. But if I put a two in front of that, that solves my hydrogen problem and that solves my chlorine problem. So really that was not the most difficult balancing equations ever. We just had to put a two in front of the HCl. Now it says, sulfuric acid reacts with water in two steps as represented by the equations below. So you've got sulfuric acid plus water breaks up into H3O plus plus HSO4 minus. Then the HSO4 minus reacts with water again to give another H3O plus plus SO4 to minus. Now it says, define the term ampholite. Now ampholite is a substance which can act as both an acid or a base. It can act as both an acid or it can act as a base depending on what it's reacting with. Okay, now it says write down the formula of the species that acts as an amphalite in the above reactions. Okay, so do you agree that over here this is an acid and this is a base? So we're going to okay, that's acid 1 and base um, 2. So now we want its conjugate, okay? So remember that over here, an acid is a proton donor, so therefore this is its conjugate base, okay? And then this here is its conjugate acid to this base. Now HSO4 over here is acting as an acid over here because the water again is acting as a base because it becomes H3O+. Plus. And HSO4 minus gives away a hydrogen to become SO4 2 minus. So therefore, your HSO4 minus, the HSO4 minus is acting as both an acid and a base. Now it says write down the name of the conjugate base of the hydrogen sulfate ion. So it wants to know what is the name of the conjugate base of the hydrogen sulfide ion. Well, its conjugate base is this one over here, which is, sorry, if that's acid 1, that's going to be base 1, is just the sulfate ion, the sulfate ion. Right, again grade 11s, if you don't know what's been going on in this lesson, go back to the sections, revise the sections, and then come and do these questions again. Have a great day.